As is, uh, as is our custom in Yahats, we like to start meetings on time. So it's one o'clock and it's time to start, and I want to thank you all for coming out. Um, John Murray took credit for having used all his influence to create the day that we have today, so let's thank John for the weather. He said it's the second time in his life he's actually been able to put that influence to this kind of successful use, so uh, I appreciate that. I'm Ron Breen. I'm the mayor of Yahats, for any of you who don't happen to know me. Uh, I'm also a member of the Yahats Trail Crew. For anybody else who is a member of the Yahats Trail Crew, please raise your hand. At the risk of repeating myself from things I've said in the past, this is a remarkable community. Um, you know, there are, according to the census, 700 people who live here. And if you counted hands real quick, you probably saw about 30 of them go up just in this group here. And there are some of the trails crew who aren't here. On any given day, we can put out a call for people to come out and help us to do trail work, to do trail maintenance, to pull exotic species, weeds uh, off the trail, or even to build a new trail. And that's the group of people that show up. You'll also notice that we're not the youngest people in the world. <laughs> so it's nice that there's a lot of us to share the load. However, in order to get more done, we were able to kind of conscript a lot younger people. And these folks from the Job Corps, please raise your hands. <laughs> Did a lot of the heavy lifting for us in putting this trail package together. Now, um, we appreciate trails in Yahats, and we have found through um, talking to our citizens and to talking to the people who come to visit us from all over the country, all over the world, all over the state, uh, that they appreciate them too. That's the number one item that we hear in visitor surveys about the things that they want to see more of and the things that they appreciate here. So we decided we would continue to do what we could to provide for that need. Now the idea for this particular trail that you're going to have a chance to walk on in a few minutes was uh, started way back when. The whole 804 trail controversy and the idea of having this wonderful trail along the coast uh, Jim Gerdeman and Janice Gerdeman, Janice right here up front, saw that it would be a tremendous value to this community to open up their magnificent botanical preserve and give people a chance to walk from the 804 trail through their preserve and then on into the beautiful National Forest back into town, making it part of a big circulation route. So that idea, a number of people, and particularly Joanne Cattell, please raise your hand, Joanne. I've been working on for a number of years. Um, Kathleen and Jerry Sands, where are you? They're raising their hands somewhere. Look for them. They're here. There they are. Uh, they are They are now the owners and managers of the Gerdeman Bot Botanical Preserve. And on their watch, we have finished a number of trails in the preserve. They have been key to getting this lined out and into place. And we had this need to pass through a piece of the U.S. National Forest in order to get where we wanted to go. Has anybody ever dealt with a, a federal bureaucracy? <laughs> well, I tell you what, these folks, um, they came to the table. In the end, they did everything they could to make this happen. They have rules and regulations they have to follow. Federal bureaucracies are the way they are because we are a country built on the premise that you can't trust government. So it has to go slow. Okay, so it... It did go slow, but it went. And with the help of uh, Michelle Jones and our, the new, newest uh, forester that we've worked with for the Sayusla National Forest, um, we, we got all of the permits that we needed, and they helped us immensely. Uh, Craig Lindell uh, provided some of his time and expertise in helping us get this trail through. We are real proud of it. I mean, if I'm not conveying the excitement that I have for this, you're not listening. It's a great trail. It's a great opportunity. I chose this hat to wear today. I'm retired from California State Parks. I feel great. I'm outdoors. I'm talking about a trail, and I'm with a bunch of people who are here that appreciate that concept. So one of the things about dedications, though, is you have to listen to people like me speak, and we have to share that speaking opportunity with other people who have been encouraging, who have been supportive of us, and we have a number of those folks. I'm going to start with Michelle, 
who has uh, shown up to a number of meetings and uh, done a lot of other things other than this trail. She is relatively new to the forest, but she's already shown herself to be a willing partner to work with the community. Michelle? So uh, thank you so much for allowing me to be here today. It's quite an honor to be able to stand up here and be with all you folks from uh, Yahats and, and surrounding areas. Um, as Ron said, my name is Michelle Jones. I'm the District Ranger for the Central Coast Ranger District and the Oregon Dunes National Recreation Area. And we are part of the Sayusla National Forest. And uh, before I start, I wanted to say that um, Angel Job Corps, which is also part of the Forest Service, um, was a great partner of this as well. So um, thanks to Angel Job Corps. Um, so uh, happy National Trails Day, everyone. All right. All right. So we're here today to celebrate the uh, official opening of the Yahike Trail and uh, the incredible partnership between the city of uh, Yahats and the Sayusla National Forest. Um, the Sayusla National Forest is known for restoration, recreation, and partnerships. Um, we are <clears throat> pioneers in ecosystem restoration and providing outstanding recreational opportunities along the Oregon coast. Um, we're trusted and we get things done. And the important piece of that is that we can only achieve this through our partnerships. Uh, partners bring to us new ideas and resources. They have energy and enthusiasm for National Forest System lands. They challenge us to think outside the box and lead us in new and exciting directions. Um, so this day is about celebrating partnerships, and particularly our partnership with the city of Yaha. So, um, We've had a strong partnership with the city of Yahats for over a decade, and I look forward to the future and continuing for another decade at least. You know, I've been fortunate enough to live all across this country and worked on several national forests. My dad would say that I have trouble keeping a job, but um, <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a wonderful experience. And I can tell you in all my experience across this country that the city of Yahats, I have never felt or seen the, um, the volunteerism for community that I've seen in Yahats. And um, so congratulations to everyone. It's, a, it's wonderful. So these great people recognize that trails connect people with nature. The natural world comes alive on trails. Trails allow us to access the natural world for recreation, education, exploration, solitude, inspiration, and much, much more. Um, the city of Yahats understands that trails strengthen communities. They strengthen the social fabric in communities because volunteering is one measure of the vitality of society. People working together, giving their time freely, and sharing socially valuable meaning activities. These are practices that create strong communities. Um, many of us recognize that there's a therapeutic and almost spiritual uh, aspect of trails. Research shows that half an hour a week alone in a natural setting can have a positive therapeutic value, just a half an hour a week. So as you hike the trail either this afternoon or some other time, I'd ask you to reflect on all the hard work and dedication it has take, taken to build this trail, and then thank those that you know that have worked to volunteer. For all our partners out there within earshot, the tribes, Oregon State Parks, Lincoln County, the City of Yahats, the Cape Perpetua Foundation, and many, many more. Please hear me when I say we couldn't do it without you. <clears throat> Thank you for walking beside us in the management of the Sayuslaw National Forest. Finally, I'd like to leave you with these three thoughts. Nature matters, nature provides, and the greatest good through engaging community. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, I've told, uh, I've told the story I'm about to tell a number of times, and some of you have heard it, and I'm sorry about that. I'm going to tell it again anyway because it seems appropriate today. Um, when I first started getting involved with the League of Oregon Cities, I went to a couple of events, and people from other places in the state would come up to me and they'd say, Yahats, are, are you still in Lincoln County? <laughs> and what they were talking about was geographically, going down the coast, are you still in Lincoln County? Well, yeah, we are still in Lincoln County, and uh, we have a Lincoln County Commissioner, Mr. Bill Hall, who is a great supporter of the city of Yahats, and uh, a great commissioner, Mr. Hall.
Thank you, Ron, uh, and uh, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, you know, Yahats is a very special place to me. Uh, next year will be the 50th anniversary of the first time I sat foot in this beautiful spot. I was five years old, visiting with my parents. We were on our way back from a trip from California. And, you know, growing up, one of the fears I had as I would return with my parents, seeing the development taking place uh, up and down the coast was that Yahats might get spoiled, but 49 years later, it's not spoiled. It's better than ever. And I think the, the completion of the trail that we celebrate today, this story is really a beautiful one. If you haven't read the story in the program, if you haven't looked at the list of all the partners and contributors on the back, I really urge you to do that because this didn't happen overnight. It took a vision, starting off with the Gerdmans, the Cattells, then other people saw that vision and uh, kind of hitched their wagon to that star. You had partners at every level. I'm very proud Lincoln County was able to come in through our land legacy program, which provides financing for surveying, legal work, to support a project like this. And then talk about the community, the trails group, uh, the uh, young people who worked on building it, the property owners who provided easements and support. And I'm so glad we're going to hear more about the fact that this trail honors the first peoples who called this land their home. It honors the beauty that surrounds us all. Thank you. Not to stay too long on a theme, but the fact that we are still in Lincoln County is important. <laughs> Notwithstanding the, the, the fact that a recent redistricting of the way that the House seats are drawn put us into a group with the people south of Lincoln County. And uh, I think that may have worked to our benefit because it brought us Caddy McCune, uh, our representative, and she's here today with us as well. Thank you, Wayne. Good afternoon. It truly is an honor for me to be here as the junior member of your legislative delegation. Um, this is an area that's relatively new to me. I, my first trip up here was about a year and a half ago and, and I had the great, great pleasure of meeting Mayor Breen and, and Joanne Cattell and I could tell from the get-go that things were happening in Yahats. It was no surprise to me that there are movers and shakers in this community that are dedicated and talented and skilled and know how to get things done. Um, I'm pleased to join you on National Trails Day today to participate in this dedication. Realizing the dream of the Gerdemans, a uh, longtime dream of linking the, the Botanical Preserve with the historic 804 Trail and North is an amazing feat. Uh, you've heard people comment so far about the effort that it took, the dedication, the perseverance, the vision, and um, I, I've been involved in some of these projects down at the south end of the state, and it's, it, I know how hard it is uh, and the fortitude and the vision and the strength that it takes to actually get these things to the finish line. Um, it's a testament to the difference, of, the, the difference of a committed group who won't take no for an answer. Um, and, and as has been said, these, these projects take a long, long time. They don't happen easily, and it takes unflagging determination. Uh, I won't go over the list again. You've heard it a few times now of the people that participated in this, uh, but um, I just have to champion and compliment and uh, just tell you how grateful I am that there are people who are willing to take these beautiful places that you have here and make them available to the public at large. Um, I also think it's very fitting that this trail is named for the original village of the Alsea people who once inhabited this area on the coast. Um, I am so honored um, a, a week or so ago to have been appointed to serve on the Oregon Legislative Commission on Indian Services. Uh, District 9 that I represent has three tribes that it represents, and I'm just delighted to have an opportunity to represent them. Uh, the commission was created to advise the legislative assembly and state agencies on the needs of American Indian peoples in Oregon. Uh, the first step in ensuring that we serve those needs effectively is to be conscious of the history of our first residents, and that's something that you're all doing here today, which I think is to be greatly commended. Um, I commend the Yahats Trails Committee for honoring the history by naming it, and I'm going to try and get this right, Yahait yeah. Trail. <laughs> uh, 
and I will practice that as time goes on. And in, in conversations this morning as we were coming up here, um, the legislative um, process is keeping us quite busy right now and our time is rather short, but I can't wait for signee die to occur and the legislative session to end. So I have an opportunity to come up and explore all these beautiful opportunities that you're providing not only to your local residents, but to your, 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 your guests who come through your town and provide that economic vitality by stopping and staying and enjoying the things that you provide. So I congratulate you on a job very, very, very well done. Uh, thank you so much for every single one of you for coming here today just to acknowledge it, even as something to be um, complimented. And thank you all who've had a part, our part in, in uh, making this wonderful day occur. So have a great day enjoying the trail. And come July, you'll see, you'll see me up here. And I'll be bringing my staff, and, and we'll become much more familiar with the things that are happening up here in, in this beautiful forest um, in Yohat. So thank you so much, and enjoy your day. Well, in the election that brought Caddy to us, um, we got um, some representation from um, someone who had been serving the people of Oregon, but not us directly, because he was in—he was not still in Lincoln County, <laughs> but he is now, and that's Arnie Roblin, who is now our state senator, and I think we lucked out on that score as well. Arnie, it really is a pleasure for me to be here as your state senator. But you know, when I started thinking about coming and speaking today, I really thought about my childhood. Um, I grew up in Port Angeles, Washington, and my play field was the Olympic National Park. Um, and I've walked across it a couple times, I've walked up into the different high lakes, and I've had an opportunity to use this amazing <coughs> place to help me grow up and to get away from town and get away from people and get back up into these amazing natural areas. And, you know, to get surrounded by elk herds and have all sorts of wonderful experiences with bear, with almost anything that's up there. Um, we went to sleep one night with a group of us and uh, we had put our stuff up in the trees and this, these two bears, a mom and her cubs, came through our camp and walked over us and we just kept thinking, this is really dangerous. We're just, laying here. We're just gonna lay here and have a good day. And, uh, didn't sleep much that night, but they just wandered through and they checked around, couldn't find anything and went on their way. But, you know, it, it, it is, it is an amazing thing to have the opportunity to live in a place where nature is right there and where you as children get to wander out and see what that nature is about, you know, to, to, to experience that. And then when I became a principal at Marshfield High School in Coos Bay, um, I had the opportunity to work with lots of different groups uh, to try to do things. And one of the fun, really great experiences that we had was building a trail. There's a little school called Blossom Gulch. It's on Blossom Creek, uh, right in downtown Coos Bay. And behind it is kind of a wilderness. And uh, there was a group of us that got together and thought, that would be really great for these kids. We could build a gazebo back there. They could put salmon back in the little stream that goes underneath Coos Bay and comes out at a uh, whatever. And, and kids could have that and be part of that whole thing. And then a trail up the hill that shows where old growth timber was and some big stumps that, and stuff. And it would be a great trail. And so I am looking at what you guys did with the number of different agencies you had to work with. We had the city of Coos Bay and the school district. That was it. You know. um, but building that trail took a lot of time. And again, instead of having Job Corps, we had AmeriCorps. <laughs> we, we found those AmeriCorps people that were willing to help put that stuff together. And, you know, they said, oh, you can't build that gazebo that way because you need to have the structure in the middle to hold the center up. And some engineers in town said, no, no, we can figure that out. And many months later, they came up with a set that did it, and people said, we should copy that. That's a really pretty good idea. So. You know, it is the inventive and the and the people who d get a vision and then don't take no and have that persistence. And I and I have to say that the people who were persistent here and who were willing to actually give the leases through their land that that's a that's a, some it says something about a community when you have people who are saying, you know, we have this wonderful thing we don't want to keep it for ourselves we want to share it with everybody. And I want to thank you. And all of you. But even after they give it, they've got to work with the federal government, you got to work with state government, you got to work with county government, you all these people. It, it is remarkable uh, how many meetings you have to go to. Um, and so I, I commend persistence because I, I used to tell kids at school, if there's one thing that we could teach you about as a student, it would be to be persistent. If you have an idea, don't give up on it. You know, and I've had a number of opportunities over the years to work with kids who were persistent and they got things done that they never thought that they would have. And, you know, this is a, a great thing for you as citizens here to share with your students and your children here. 
about, you know, things don't come real easily. They have to be worked at. They have to be talked about. They have to be shared with other people before you actually get things that are really important. And really, really important things don't always happen instantaneously. And so I want to encourage each and every one of you to remember to continue to tell the story about how it happened. Uh, when people walk on the trail, they shouldn't expect that it just happened, you know? It was so nice that it's here. Um, make sure the story keeps being told, that you pass that on, because I think as our first citizens of this, of this land, um, our, our, our Siletz tribe now in this area, as, as they know, um, most of their history is passed on through the stories that they tell. And I think we found, sometimes forget that that's really the best way for each generation to learn from the mouths of their family members, from the mouths of their community, through the stories that their community have brought together. And it's what's, it's what's best about our country. It's what's missing right now at our political things in Washington, D.C., and the little things that happen here when we have our squabbles. We forget to go back and listen to the stories that our forefathers and our other people have told us about getting along, about making things work, about not hurrying through things, but having the conversations until people come to a community agreement. And that's what this trail should be able to explain to generations in the future that come here, visit Oregon and spend time with you. So, and I'll try this, the name too, it's Yahach, Yahaych. We'll get there eventually. We have a person that's going to follow me that can probably say it exactly right. So, um, I, I just want to thank you all for being here, for learning the story and hopefully passing the story on to each and every generation that comes after here about how Yahach makes things work together. Uh, and it shouldn't, hopefully, as time goes on, become a surprise that that works, but that that becomes the general way it works. So, again, thank you for having the opportunity to be a part of this. We do have one more speaker, and uh, he's really going to be on the spot to get the pronunciation <laughs> correct. Uh, but before I ask him to come up, I want to point out a couple of other people, just mm -hmm. so I make sure that I don't forget. First of all, can we have... A round of applause for Mary Beth Nichols, who has provided the music for us. And secondly, uh, Arnie mentioned people who had contributed their land for easements for access to that. We are on the Fistera property, and uh, Lane Morrill and the group that he worked with is one of those people. I see Steve Dennis is over here. He's one of those people through the, uh, the gallery that gave us the opportunity. Uh, Robin Matthews is also here. Raise your hand, both of you, so people who don't know you. Uh, and of course, uh, the Sands we already mentioned. Uh, one other mention, we're going to have an opportunity to be at the reception across the road at the Overleaf um, Event Center. And the Overleaf gave the easement to get across their property to tie in with the 804 Trail. So Drew Roslin and his family and that business also willingly not only contributed uh, the, the land access, they built the trail across our property and we were surprised to see it. Oh, we've already done it. Thank you very much. All right, now, the challenge of pronouncing the, the Hikes Trail. How do I do, Robert? All right. Robert Kenta from the Siletz Drive. Mayor Breen. What a beautiful day and a lovely group of people to get together and talk about such a nice collaboration that has ended up in something that's going to benefit generations to come. The big debate about pronunciation. Okay, I guess I'm on the spot. <laughs> uh, over the years, people have asked me that question and I've thought about it myself. And eventually, uh, it was largely through this project and uh, Joanne Cattell uh, reminding me a couple of times that we needed to look at this and try to settle the issue. Uh, there's been a variety of linguists that have worked over the years on our local tribal languages. And of course, each of them developed their own writing system uh, for each of the languages because there's so many sounds in Indian languages that aren't easily adaptable to an English uh, phonetic system. So, uh, we had lots of different examples of writing, and uh, which was supposed to represent the pronunciation of Yahats or Yahaik. And uh, with most of our languages, you have to have a bit of slobber in your mouth and 
and gargle your H, or kind of an X, gargled X is how we uh, uh, usually represent it when we're trying to write our tribal languages down. So I didn't quite hit it on that first uh, <laughs> tribe, so let me see if I can work it up this time. Yeah, hike. <laughs> we had, uh, like I said, a number of different uh, representations of that in different writing systems. And eventually, enough of those writing systems confirmed uh, that pronunciation. So, uh, we really don't have any fluent speakers in ALSI language anymore. The creation story of the ALSI people says that they, the Aquina, the Yahaik people, the Sayusla, and Lower Umpqua were all one people and spoke the same language. And that's such an ancient story that today's linguists say they don't <laughs> recognize the people as speaking one language. They make a division between Yahats and people north of here, and Sayusal Lower Umpqua being a different language group, and some subdivisions within those two groups. So linguists are very particular about uh, th how they make divisions, not necessarily in keeping with our tribal people's view on the subject. But all of those people became confederated on our reservation beginning in 1856. The reservation was created here in November of 1855, and it extended down from including the Silkus watershed south of what's now Florence up to Cape Lookout. Over 100 miles of our beautiful Oregon coast was included within our reservation. And of course that got whittled down to eventually nothing in the 1950s. Our tribal recognition was yanked away by Congress. And in the 1970s, Congress saw fit to restore our tribal recognition, uh, the first tribe in Oregon who had been terminated to accomplish that. So November 18, 1977, we became the second tribe in the nation who had been terminated to reestablish our tribal government. So it's a long journey back to full restoration and you know, I, I have to say over the last decade or so, there's been a change of the feel in Yahats. And that's largely due to some very open-minded, very friendly, very welcoming, very curious local people who have built partnerships within the community, with our tribal folks, with state parks, with the Forest Service. And many of those people are uh, employees or former employees of those agencies and you know the sharing of what's beautiful and right in the world that's good medicine that's how our tribal people live for thousands of years we didn't have individual ownership of blocks of land we all shared in common we all had a responsibility towards it and we all shared in the wealth that came from that effort so I probably uh, missed on a few subjects I should have touched on. I just want to show the uh, appreciation of the tribe for all the good things that all you people are doing. Oh, and I will mention our uh, annual meeting with the Sayuslaw National Forest this year was held at Job Corps and their culinary program served us a wonderful lunch. <laughs> and some of their native uh, program participants, students, uh, came in and talked with us about some of the things they're studying and, and hope to do. So nice to see the good work that Job Corps is doing. And the contributions here with the trail are just another good sign of that good work. So I'll wrap up with a song. And I don't know any LC songs. That's one of the language groups among our confederation I need to work on more. So I'll sing a song from south of here. I <laughs> I return now, I return a hailing. I return a hailing. I return a hailing. I return now, I return a hailing. I return a hailing. I return now, I return a hailing. I return a hailing. I return a hailing. Thank you.
Well, there you have it. It's a wonderful day. It's a wonderful group of people all around you. Uh, it's a wonderful world, and uh, I think it's probably time we go out and explore it just a little bit. You look back over here, kind of in the middle, you see some folks in uniform, some young, energetic folks. that I, I understand that they're going to be heading out on the trail in front of us and uh, telling us a little bit about what you can see as you go out along there. Is that correct? Did, they had, some of them have been on the trail those cell this mornings, but I guess you know you learn quick and you know everything there is to know, and you can. You, have you practiced pronouncing the the name of the trail? <laughs> all right, we can all practice that together. Right now, thank you everyone for coming, and let's go out and take a look at the trail. We'll make the walk on the those of us who are wanting to. We'll make the walk on the trail. We'll carefully cross the highway with the help of people getting across there to where the reception is on the other side. And uh, thank you to uh, all of our elected officials and all of our volunteers and to the Job Corps and to the people who gave us land and to like all of us uh, for uh, putting this whole project together. Thanks, everybody. We have a new interpretive force service rangers that uh, it's their first day on the job and you'll meet some of them along the way and, and hopefully they'll tell you uh, a story that we think maybe this new trail is telling us and it's a story of partnerships and uh, the, the first partnership uh, you're listening to right now besides 101. You hear the water? Mm -hmm. Right and that's really the result of this great partnership that exists between the ocean and this forest. Uh, because we wouldn't have this temperate rainforest without that partnership of the landscape interacting with the Pacific Northwest climate that gives us such a lush green forest of green trees. Uh, and it's, a, it's, a, it's the first partnership maybe to think about as you're walking along, but I hope you'll stop and, and say hello and meet all our new rangers that are out in the field today and probably pretty nervous because uh, this is their, their, their first big task. And, and let them tell you about maybe some other partnerships that you have or haven't thought about. And I'm Dave Thompson. Uh, thanks for stopping and, and happy National Trails Day. My name is Megan. I am a field ranger working with the Sayusla National Forest this summer. As you guys already talked to Dave a little bit about partnerships of this forest. Partnership I want to talk about is with the species that actually live in our um, temperate rainforest. If you guys look up here, this large Sitka spruce is actually home an amazing habitat for an endangered species that lives out here called the marbled merlet, if you guys are familiar with that. It's actually a seabird that hunts and fishes along the coast but flies inland to um, nest and hatch its young in our temperate rainforest, which makes this such a unique environment for it. It'll even fly in 35 miles in the state of Oregon to find a suitable home. What it does is it goes at least 70 feet up into these large old growth trees and nests on these large branches that are just covered in moss. It provides nests um, so they don't have to even collect extra little pieces to create their nests. The moss is so soft that it provides um, a home for it to really um, thrive out here. And the Forest Service mission really is to not only protect and preserve our temperate rainforest, but also preserve the home of these indeed. And if you guys want to continue a little bit farther down the trail, some more friendly faces, kind of talk about um, the U.S. Forest Service and our mission and sort of our other partnerships in this area. So welcome to National Forest. This part of the trail is actually part of your public lands, and uh, we're really excited to welcome you to it. I'm Eliza Spear. I am a Student Conservation Association field ranger working for the Forest Service this summer doing interpretation all throughout the site you saw. I'm from Pennsylvania originally so it's really fun to be out here in the Northwest for the summer and get to experience some of that beauty and wildlife that I've heard all about for a long time. And I'm David Diaz and I'm coming from Florida so I'm trying to learn a little bit more about mountains and the difference in things. So, you know, it's, it's a different area for me and I'm very excited to learn how to, how to interpret uh, this beautiful landscape and also how to get people connected their environments. So um, what's really cool and what you guys heard a little bit about in all those introductory speeches is this network of trails and this connection between those two pre-existing ones 
uh, it wouldn't have been possible without a lot of collaboration and a lot of teamwork and a lot of partnership. Um, and that's between federal organizations, private interests, and it's really created this beautiful area that everyone gets to enjoy. And it's so exciting that it's open to public use and hopefully will be usable for a really long time with that partnership and maintaining it. Um, and so that goes along really well with the Sayus Laws Redefined Mission, uh, which just came about in recent years. Yeah, so before it used to be uh, timber, you know, timber, 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 that was the, the main purpose uh, for these forests. But it's changed to restoration, uh, recreation, and partnerships. And I think those are three very big, strong words that uh, kind of create a sense of community when, um, for instance, the timber, the profits for the timbers are used for um, restoration efforts. And that kind of helps create uh, all these uh, trees, for instance, this one used to be an old growth tree, but uh, hopefully within the next couple of generations we'll have more of these type of trees up and about so future generations can enjoy it like we are doing it today. So if you guys think about, you know, the Forest Service is working towards that restoration and, you know, we try to bring in a lot of science and a lot of knowledge to figure out how to make that happen, but we can also learn so much from the natural systems that are here already and the people who worked with these systems before the Forest Service or before any many of the organizations that are a part of it now. So as you continue on, think about what might have existed here before us and um, what great things we can learn from this forest, aside from ourselves and aside from what our scientists have to offer us. So continue on and enjoy the trail. About the partnership between uh, the American Indian populations that lived here for thousands of years and the natural world around you. So, like, <laughs> uh, he put much better than I probably could at the beginning. Uh, that I'll see people who lived here and Yahaik, Yahaik uh, was one of the original, or uh, the only village they know that was in this area. And they lived in accordance with nature, like I said, for thousands of years. And one example I wanted to give you of that is how this man is leaning on this great tree here. Can anyone tell me what that tree is? What species that Sitka tree is? Sitka spruce, right? So this is one of the most dominant trees in our forest, right now at least. And they would use this tree for many reasons. They use the pitch for medicinal purposes. They would use it for cold, sore throats, a lot of other reasons. They would eat the inner bark, either fresh or dried, and they would dry it with berries such like the red huckleberry here or the salal down here, and use that for, they would dry them in the fall, eat it in, in the winter. And that brings my other point that they were what we call circle circle with the seasons and so they would move around depending on what was available at that time in different parts of their area. So I wanted to thank you for stopping by, just a quick tidbit. As you move on, the next station is going to talk about the partnership that different parts of nature has with itself that makes all of these things possible for us to enjoy. Hi, my name is Anna and I am a student conservation intern at the Science Law National Forest this summer. And my name is Dylan Wilner. I am also a Student Conservation Association intern working on the Science Law National Forest this summer. Yeah, so the theme we've kind of heard everybody talk about today is partnerships. And we're standing in front of one of my favorite and probably one of the maybe most overlooked partnerships that I think there is in nature. And that is the partnership between life and death. So we're standing in front of this beautiful nurse log um, that's just teeming with moss and young trees and so many other things that like wouldn't be here and this forest wouldn't be here if there wasn't this cycle between um, things living and then dying. Yeah, and uh, these partnerships uh, for the, uh, the new growth on this old tree would not be possible without the partnerships within the partnerships. What I mean by that is uh, the decomposers that make this wood available for um, easily soaking up nutrients within these new growths. You need to have the fungi, you need to have insects come in and uh, break it down a little better and then the bacteria come in and break it down. Um, and eventually new life sprouts from it and hemlock trees tend to grow from these nurse logs quite prominently and if you look behind you there's a good example of a hemlock tree growing on a stump. It's not a nurse log but one of the prominent features of hemlock trees are sometimes roots that stick downward and sometimes dirt will come to cover that up so you have those uh, roots that are very close to the surface. When a tree is alive it focuses all of its living tissue around a ring uh, of living tissue on the outside and that grows out every year um, and all the tissue inside is actually dead material. Um, but in this nurse log, as Dylan was mentioning, all that, those fungi and bacteria and insects that are crawling in there take over the entire tree and actually there's more living material in a dead log than there is in that live tree that it came from. 
and we've recognized this on uh, the Syaslaw National Forest and other national forests throughout the nation. Uh, whenever we have a thinning or some kind of restoration project, when we're going through trees, we'll tend to down some of them and just leave them there to decay and provide sustenance for new growth. And growth. Uh, taking through uh, the most important connection of all, and that's community members. This is private property you're going to walk through through the uh, Gurdaman Botanic Preserve. And really, that's what we all are, you know, those of us who have worked on the trail in different ways. First and foremost, we're, we're members of a community and we share this common vision of having places like this that we can keep and we can enjoy 